पे विशुच पुत्र अत्र स्वरूपम रूपम तस्ग्रजापुरी माथुरी Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the Samad Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas. By the courses mercy of Sri Guru and Gauranga, today we are celebrating this most auspicious festival, Sri Baladev Punima. Sri Baladev Punima Mahamotsava Ki Jai! It is the birthday of our Dauvaya, Sri Krishna's elder brother, Baladev Prabhu. So, in Braja Mandal, they celebrate Baldev's appearance day after Janmashtami. Uh, because, especially in Mathura, 
the Shastra Garga Samhita is very popular. And in the Garga Samhita, there it is uh, written that Baldev appeared on Baldev chart, which means the sixth day of the moon that comes uh, after Janmashtami. But mm, our Jiva Goswami part has pointed out in Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, Poor Nindu, that Balaram has appeared on the full moon day. Oh, just before Sri Krishna, huh? before the Astami of Sri Krishna's appearance. So, this Purnima, that Baldev appeared on this Purnima, we should take this as uh, in this Dev Lord Brahma where the pastimes of Krishna and Balaram have been described in Srimad Bhagavatam from this day of Lord Brahma that mm, Balaram is uh, older than Krishna uh, just from the Purnima to the to the Astami if he were born after Janmashtami on the next Shasti then the Ch Baldev chart then he would be almost one year older than Krishna and if that were the case then it would not be possible for Krishna and Balaram's Namkaran Sanskar name giving ceremony because the child cannot live for a whole year without a name uh, more than a year so Krishna and Balaram's name giving ceremony was uh, done by Gagacharya in the Goshala of uh, Nanda Maharaj in Gokul also they would not have they, their other samskars uh, could not have been performed together and they could not have uh, grown up and wrestled with each other in a, they were very uh, quite equally matched with each other if Balaram had been so much older then uh, they would not be equally matched so uh, this is the appearance day of Baladev who is Baladev? Sri Krishna Ishwaraha Parama Krishna Satinananda Bigraha. Sri Krishna is the Ishra of all Ishras. Sri Krishna is the Advaya Gyan Paratattva, non dual absolute reality. Sri Krishna is Adi Purush, the origin of all incarnations. He is Swayam Bhagavan. He is Raso Vaisaha, the endless ocean of all Rasa. So Krishna is the original form of Bhagavan. But when Bhagavan expands himself into another form and there is mm, ba uh, Baba Vesh Bhed, slight difference in mood, Baba Vesh Bhed and also uh, difference in Varna, in color. Krishna is dark and uh, Balram is fair like the moon. So that very Krishna Oh, has become Balaram with some speciality of mood and complexion. So that expansion of Krishna is called Vaibhava Prakash. Swayam Rup, from Swayam Rup comes the Vaibhava Prakash, Balaram. So just as it, as it is said that Radha Krishna Aichi Sada Eki Swarup Lila Ras Aswadite Dari Rup Radha and Krishna are one, but they have become two in order to relish some special lila rasa, some mellows of their lila. So in the same way, though Radhika is Shakti and uh, Balaram is a Vishnu Tattva, but still uh, Krishna and Balaram are one and Krishna has assumed two forms to relish uh, so many different rasas, mellows of his divine lila with his slightly elder brother Balaram. So see, Jadev Goswami has written, Mboha Siva Pushi Vishadi Vasanam Jalatabam Palahati Biti Milita Yamunabam Keshavadita Haladara Rupa Jaya Jagadish Hari 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 Jaya Jagadish Hari Keshava Drita Haladarupa. Krishna, that is Keshava, he himself has assumed the form of Halada, the holder of the plough Balaram. So, in Braj Lila, Balaram doesn't carry the plough or pest. These are his two weapons. 
the hull uh, and the, the, the plow and the uh, pestle. So, Balaram, how is his mood different from Krishna? Krishna has Savior Abhiman. I am to be served. And Balaram is Krishna himself with Sevaka Abhiman. I have to serve Krishna. So because Balaram is Krishna's first expansion, God himself in the mood of his own first servant. Therefore Baldev Prabhu is Akhanda Guru Tattva. Hmm? Understand? He is Akhanda Guru Tattva, the original Guru Tattva. Now, Sri Krishna Swarup is Satchidananda. His Swarup is the manifestation of his Swarup Shakti. And that Swarup Shakti has three vrittis, Sandini, Samvit and Ladini. Simati Radhika is the Adhistati Devi, the predominating deity of Ladini Shakti. Krishna is the predominant Adhistati Devata of Samvit. And Baladev Prabhu is the Adhistati Devata of Sandini, the existence potency. Therefore, if there is any existence anywhere, that existence has come from Baladev Prabhu. Any existence. That means the existence of all the spiritual worlds, all the Vaikuntha planets, all the material worlds, all the jivas, everything. The, the root is Baladev Prabhu. So, Baladev Prabhu is the Akanda Guru Tattva. Now sometimes it is said that you should see the Guru as the uh, manifestation of Baladev or Nityananda Prabhu because uh, Baladev Prabhu came in Gauri as Nityananda Prabhu. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we hear that Guru is a Guru Rupa Sakhi. Mm -hmm. hmm? Near and dear maid servant of Shimati Radhika. Tam Gopika Abrashwara Sthani Antikesi Seva Adhikani Garoni Japarapadme Dasyam Pradaya Kurmam Brajakane Sirad Angri Sevena Sai Sukhinim Skabdo Oh Gurudev, you are very near and dear to the tips of the toes of the uh, daughter of Brishu Banu Maharaj, Shimati Radhika. And mm, you can bestow upon me the eligibility to serve her. So sprinkle your mercy upon me so that I may sink eternally in the happiness of service to the lotus feet of Radhika in the Nikunjas of Braja. So then the question comes, how should one see Gurudev? Is Gurudev Guru Tattva like Baladev or Nityananda Prabhu? Oh, Guru Rupa Sakhi. So it depends on the adhikar of the disciple. What, in what stage are you in? You know, when Krishna was fighting with Vyomasur, then Krishna, the struggle with Vyomasur was so intense that even Sri Krishna's crown fell off. And there's an imprint of his crown in the, on the stone in the hill of um, Kamyavan, where there is the Vyomasura Guf, the cave of Vyomasur. So the whole world was a shaking. And just across from that mountain you can see there's the footprint of Balaram. Because when the whole world was shaking in this tremendous fight, Balaram pushed down with his foot and steadied the whole world. Mm -hmm. So this is the nature of the lotus feet of Balaram. He is the Adhistatri Devita of Sandini existence. He gives the stability. Understand? Stability. The problem with our in our life and our practice is the we are astita pragya astita pragya our intelligence is not stita fixed it is astita pragya hmm? always moving so from the astita pragya comes all desires Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita prajati yada kama sarvam pata manogatam who is Tita Pragya? That person who is satisfied in himself. Because he has given up all desires which are born from the mind. What does that mean? When the mind is not Tita fixed, when it is Astita Pragya, then <laughs> the, uh, the result of unsteady mind is all types of material attachments, desires, misconceptions and so on. So in the beginning of our spiritual life first, we'll have to go through anarta nivriti, the clearing of anartas, before we can come to nishta steadiness, 
and then enter into Shuddha Bhakti in the experience the Swarupa pure Bhakti in the stage of Ruchi so how will the heart become steady uh, that means Baladev Prabhu will have to put his lotus foot there in your heart and then the heart becomes Stirata Buddhi very steady consciousness Nishta comes steadiness in hearing chanting remembering serving and then we can enter into the realm of a Shuddha Bhakti so at first we should see uh, Gurudev as the, the manifestation Gurudev is the Vyasti Guru, individual Guru and that Vyasti Guru is the power coming from the Samasti Guru that is Balaram so Balaram is Akhand Guru Tattva the wholesaler of the power of Guru and he is the Akhanda, undivided Guru Tattva and when his power is coming in a Vaishnava in this world then that is the from the Samasti Guru the power is coming to the Vyasti Guru, the individual Guru so there is no difference between my Guru, your Guru Everyone's Guru is Baladev Prabhu and his power is coming in different forms to guide the living entities and when the disciple takes shelter of his Guru Pada Padma then that Sandini Shakti of uh, Baladev comes and makes his heart steady automatically when the heart is steady the anartas go away because the anartas are the symptoms of Astita Pragya mm -hmm. so then on the platform of Sandini then Samvita and Ladini can dance. That means Radha and Krishna can come and perform their pastimes in our heart. If there's no platform, then Krishna cannot appear. Krishna does not appear directly in this world. First Balaram comes in the mm, womb of uh, Devaki, makes the platform, then Krishna comes. So, but when the devotee's heart is very steady and he comes into the stage of uh, Nishta, then Ruchi, then in Asakti. In that stage of Asakti, Nikunja Yuno Ratikeli Siddhyai Ya Yalibi Yukti Rapekshaniya Tatrati Dakshad Ativalabhasya Vandei Guru Sri Charanaravindam. You see, this is not the first verse of Gurvastika. First verse is Samsara Davana Lida Loka. This is the fifth verse. So that means when you come in the stage of Asakti, then you can see Gurudev in that way. So Baladev is a Kanda Guru Tattva. He is carrying the um, Hal and Mosal. Hal means the plow and Mosal means the pestle. Because first of all, to plant the Bhakti Lata beads, the seed of devotion, the heart should be a fertile place. How can a Guru give the seed of devotion? in a field which is uh, full of rocks and boulders and weeds so before a farmer can plant a seed then first he will come with the plow and break the hard soil hmm, and make it very fertile and ready to re receive the seed so because Baladev is a Kanda Guru Tattva he's carrying the plow by his potency we have very hard heart and the rocks and stones are there it's not a very good place for farming <laughs> huh? so we come to Gurudev and Baladev's power comes through Gurudev like a plow and and starts to scratch and till the soil of the heart and prepare it to receive the Bhakti Latavish so in the beginning it can be a little bit painful <laughs> spiritual life can be a little difficult problematic it seems but anyway, if we have a Sraddha in faith in Guru Pada Padma, we just try to follow. Gradually the heart will be prepared and the seed of Bhakti will come. And when we hear Harikata, it will be watered and then it will begin to sprout. And we can experience gradually our eternal relation with Radha and Krishna. So Baladev first has the plough in one hand. The other hand is the Mosul, the club or the pestle. Why? Because if you want to make something very delicious, if you want to make a chaunts, then you have to put all the spices in the bowl and then take the pestle and grind them. Right? And when all the spi spices are ground, then it releases the, releases the flavor. So by the pestle, then Baladev Prabhu is making your heart rasala. Very delicious. Hmm? So we can experience the bhakti rasa. So Baladev Prabhu, he is serving in all ways. Baladev Prabhu is Krishna's Vaibhav Prakash. 
Then when Krishna goes to Mathura and Dwarka, that is Sankarshan, amongst the first chapter viewer of Vasudev, Sankarshan, Prajumna and Aniruddha. Then um, Baladev expands himself again and becomes the Sankarshan in the second chapter of Yuha in Vaikuntha. And then from that, that is called, uh, the first Sankarshan is called Mul Sankarshan in the first chapter of Yuha. In the second chapter of Yuha, Sankarshan is called Maha Sankarshan. Because from that Maha Sankarshan comes Maha Vishnu, Karnavdishai Vishnu. And from him Gabadakishai Vishnu. And from him Kirdakashai Vishnu. So Paramatma Vaibhava, the living entities have all come from the Paramatma. Finally he expands himself as Anantashesh, supporting the universes. So you can see Baladev is serving everywhere. In, in every realm. So we'll start from the top. In uh, Goloka Vrindavan, the Dham Vrindavan is manifest by Baladev. The Dham is Baladev's manifestation to serve Krishna. Krishna's Asan, Bhushan, Paduka, Chatra, um, Abharana, Chamar. That means his shoes, his cloth, his ornaments, Krishna's earrings. Here the the paraphernalia such as the chamara for fanning him, his bed, everything is all manifest from Baladev Prabhu. So in all of these forms, Balaram is serving in uh, Shanta mood, in a passive in a passive way. Hmm? Then Dasya, Sakya, and Vatsalya are all in Baladev. You should know that the Stai Bhav is in one of three ratis, but some personalities they have. Uh, at different times, more than one rati. So the main rati of Baladev is Sakya, is Krishna's friend. But because he wants to serve Krishna, then Dasya is him, in him, and also because he's older and tries to take care of him, his elder brother, he feels responsibility for his younger brother. So Vatsalya Bhav comes in him too. So when more than one rati is together in one heart, uh, but manifesting in different, uh, different occasions, that is called Sankula Rati. Congested Rati. So, this is the bhav of a Baladev Prabhu towards Sri Krishna. So then, he is also serving, uh, not directly, but his uh, Shakti, that is Ananga Manjari, served Krishna in Madhurasa, as the younger sister of Shimati Radhika. Then, Baladev Prabhu, he is serving by manifesting all the dams of Mathura, Dwarka, He's manifesting all of Vaikuntha and becoming all the paraphernalia, the shoes, the bed, the ornaments, the chamaras, to serve each and every uh, form of the Supreme Lord. So he is called Shesh. Krishna is called Sheshai. And Baladev is called Shesh. So the Shesh Tattva is always serving the Sheshai Tattva. So in each realm that Krishna expands, when he becomes the Vasudev in Vaikuntha, then Sankarshan is there and becoming all of his paraphernalia. And also, from Sankarshan come all the jivas in Vaikuntha. From Balaram, all the jivas in Goloka Vrindavan come. From Sankarshan come all the jivas in Vaikuntha. And from the Paramatma come all the jivas in the material world. So Balaram is manifesting all paraphernalia only for the service of Krishna. And because the jiva is Paramatma Bhai Bhava, expansion of expansion of expansion of expansion is Paramatma, and the jivas are the Vai Bhava of that Paramatma, therefore it's understood that just as all existence is manifested by Balaram or his expansions, only with the purpose of serving Krishna, so you, being a jiva, have been manifested for one purpose only, and that is to serve Krishna. So this is the importance of understanding Baladev Tattva. No. What is reality? What is existence? Existence is only for serving Krishna. Everything. Hmm? So, <clears throat> Baladev is called Shesh. Shesh means the remainder. Hmm? So many devotees are serving in, en in any ways. But Balaram is serving in all those ways. And if anything is left over, he does that too. So he's Shesh, the remainder. So this is Baladev Tattva. Now, the appearance of Baladev. 
it was uh, prophesied that Kamsa Maharaj will be killed by the eighth child of Devaki. So Kamsa Maharaj kept Basudev and Devaki in prison. And each time she gave birth, then Kamsa was killing her newborn children. So when it came to the seventh pregnancy, then everyone thought that Devaki had a miscarriage, but this was not the fact. Rather, Balaram appeared in the uh, womb of Devaki to prepare, because he's the Dham, to prepare for the appearance of Krishna. And then Yoga Maya, on the order of Krishna, transferred, attracted Balaram from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini, who was already in Braja. So because he was attracted from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini, his name is Sankarshan. And Karshan means drawn or attracted. And uh, because he was a long time in the womb, therefore any children who are born late, if the, the uh, pregnancy is extended and they are born late, usually they are very strong. So his name is Balaram or Baladev. <laughs> He's very strong. Uh -huh. Now, that Balaram who was in the womb of Devaki is Devaki Nandan Balaram. That's a Balaram's expansion. The original Balaram was already in the womb of Rohini. So just as Krishna appeared in the, the prison cell of Kamsa Maharaj in his four-armed Vaibhav Prakash form, but the original Krishna was in the womb of Yashoda. And then when Vasudev carried Krishna to Gokul, then the Vaibhav Prakash, Vasudev Krishna, entered into the original Krishna. So in the same way, the Vaibhav Prakash of Baladev went from the womb of Devaki and entered into Rohini Nandan Baladev. So, we can say that Baladev is completely a Brajabasi, not a Maturabasi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Baladev was uh, born on this day. And uh, shortly after, Sri Krishna was born, we'll be celebrating just very soon. And they were growing up together. They were completely inseparable from each other. Gopi bees to be told nityar Bhagavan bala bat kochit Udgayati kochin mukdas tat baso daruyantravat When they were little boys, then the elderly gopis of Braj used to come to Krishna and Balaram and say, Oh, can you dance? I'll give you a ladu. And then they would dance for some sweets. Or they would ask, Who is stronger in wrestling? You or Baladev? And Krishna would say, I am stronger. Baldev would say, I am stronger. And then the two boys would wrestle with each other while all the elderly gopis were clapping their hands and jeering like this. So Krishna and Balaram, Tadva Asodaru Yantravat, they were like a puppet in the hands of the elderly gopis of Raja. Chachpar Chachpe Na Chan So, When Krishna and Balaram, they became five years old, they were allowed to not take out the cows, but take the calves out to graze. And so one day, it was uh, Baladev's birth nakshatra. So he didn't go with Krishna, he stayed at home. And that's the day that Lord Brahma came and stole the cowherd boys. Otherwise, how will Lord Brahma steal Balaram? So that was the birth nakshatra. Balaram had to stay at home with Mother Rohini and give, uh, to celebrate his birth nakshatra, give some charity and cows to the Brahmanas and so on. So, at that time, when Brahmas tried to steal the cows and calves, he didn't, but he thought that he did because he came under the influence of Yogamaya. Uh, Krishna expanded and became all the boys and all the calves. And this, Krishna played in this way as all the boys and calves for a whole year. And when a year was almost up, one day, uh, Balaram and uh, Krishna, they were taking the calves to graze in the valley of Govardhan. And on the top of Govardhan were the elder cowherd men with cows and with newborn calves. So these calves were at least a year old or more. And the calves on the top were newly born. What happened? When the cows on the top of the hill saw their older calves at the bottom of the hill giving up the newly born calves 
they ran down the hill and they began to and even on the way down the hill milk was flowing from the udders and then they came and they gave the milk to the elder calves and the men on the top were so angry that the boys would come in the valley and they had done this and brought the whole herd down leaving behind the young ones so the men were very angry with the boys and they came marching down the hill ready to chastise their boys but when they saw their boys then their hearts melted and tears came from their eyes and they showed so much love more than ever before for their boys they showed as much love for their own boys as they show for Krishna and they sniffed their heads and embraced them and Balaram was watching all this and thinking what's going on? how can a cow give up the newly born calf and go and give the milk to the older one? and how can these coward men show as much love for these boys as for Krishna? now actually all these strange things had been going on for a whole year but Balaram did not notice for the whole year he didn't notice only on this day he noticed why? because by the will of Krishna Krishna wanted to reveal to Balaram his secrets because he kept a secret from everyone the whole year he hadn't told anyone but he was thinking oh I should tell my brother Balaram so what happened was for the whole year Balaram was covered by Yogamaya completely covered even seeing these weird things even the question did not come in his mind this is strange what's happening you see so that's what happens uh, of course this is even the question is not coming for him that is called Anusandan Abhav the absence of investigation you see so that's the power of Yoga Maya it causes in Vrindavan Anusandan Abhav the absence of investigation if Krishna will lift Govardhan Hill everyone will say oh let's help him with our sticks mm. huh? <laughs> why? because Yoga Maya makes the Anusandan Abhav the absence of investigation he's seven years old how can he lift a mountain on his little finger of one hand mm -hmm. huh? this it does not even occur to them you see? So we can give an analogy of Mahamaya. Mahamaya is affecting the us living entities in this world. And so because of that we don't ask questions. We just accept. Here I am, I got born. Now I'm growing old. My hair is going great. My eyes are going dim. I cannot run and jump like I could when I was young. And I will die and everyone's dying. Why? What a weird and strange existence this is. Why do you all have to die? We don't even ask the question. Why? Fully covered by Maya. And if by good fortune, by association of uh, sadhus, oh, then Maya will become a little bit slack. Then you ask the question, Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Huh? Now is the time to inquire. What am I doing here in this world? What is the truth? What is the reality? You can see millions of people running here and there. They don't ask this question. They're convinced. I, what is reality? This is reality. Television is reality. Huh? Family members, weddings, funerals. This is reality. So this Maya makes Anusandana Bhav. The absence of investigation. So Yoga Maya makes the absence of investigation in Brajalila. So Balaram did not ask any questions. But now it was Krishna's will that he should know. So one quarter, 25% of Yoga Maya was withdrawn. And then Baladev, the question came. Why? This is quite strange. Why is it happening like this? So then by Krishna's will, another 25% of Yoga Maya was withdrawn. And Baladev began to think, Ah, oh, maybe I... Who, who are these cows and who are these boys? Is this some Devi Maya? Hmm? That means some power of the demigods. Or is it some Nari Maya? some power of a great sage like Narad Muni or is it some Rakshasi Maya some power of a demon he began to conjecture about what the cause could be then another 25% of Yoga Maya was withdrawn so 75% is gone then he realized oh no Devata no Rishi or no Rakshasa can bewilder me hmm? so that can't be the answer then the last 25% was withdrawn and he looked at his brother Krishna, it must be you. You have become all these calves and all of these cows. And then Krishna took Balaram on, at one side and explained to him the whole story. Huh? Because uh, Krishna didn't want Balaram. Balaram very much loves uh, Sri Dham, Dham, Basudam and all the coward boys. 
And if Balaram had been separated then for one year, his heart would have been broken. So Krishna had to become all the boys to protect the heart of his brother Balaram. But this pastime also shows us Ekleshwar Krishna Arasabha Vritya. Krishna is Supreme Lord and even Krishna himself in his own first expansion. Hmm? Uh, if the Krishna wants him or doesn't want him to know anything, then he'll know or not know. Hmm? So Krishna is Adipurush, Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan. Many beautiful pastimes uh, Balaram performed in Braja. One day, the uh, Krishna and his friends, they were in the eastern direction from Taliban and a breeze was blowing and it were, they, could, uh, they could smell, sorry, in the western direction because the breeze was blowing from the east and they could smell the fragrance of uh, the tal fruits. So then the coward boys called, Oh, Rama Rama Mahabaho! Oh, Balaram, you have such strong arms! Oh, Krishna, we are hungry! And nearby there's a forest. N nearby there's a very wonderful forest of palm trees, tal trees. And there are very fragrant, delicious fruits there. So, actually the boys are not hungry. They wanted Krishna and Balaram to taste those fruits. But on the pretext of saying they were hungry, they were inspiring them. And they also wanted, they also wanted to uh, inspire them to relish some rasa. Because though they are the friends of Krishna in Sakyaras, but Viraras, chivalry, heroism, also is uh, compatible and nourishes the friendship. Because the boys like fighting with each other. So, they said, the problem is this, O Krishna and Balaram. There's a demon in that forest. His name is Denukasura. And he has the shape of a donkey, the shape of an ass. And he's protecting all these fruits for his master, Kamsa Maharaj. So everyone is afraid to go there. No one will go. Even birds are afraid to go there. These demons are so terrible. So in this way, they were trying to get Krishna and Balaram fired up. Krishna and Balaram looked at each other. They were smiling. How can a donkey be so strong? Hmm? Let's go. Come on, let's go. So the boys went marching off to Talavan. So when they arrived in Talavan, then Balaram, he took the mm, trunk of one of the tal trees, which was very thick and strong, but he began to shake it. And has, as he was shaking it, then the fruits began falling. Dop, dop, dop from the trees. And the sound of the falling fruits uh, came into the ears of Denet Kasur and his associates. So then he came, he was ferocious. So many huge donkey demons, they came galloping there, hmm, braying like thunder, and he attacked Balaram. So Denikasu came, and as donkeys tend to do, they attack with the hind legs. He turned around, and he kicked Balaram in the chest. But Balaram was completely unhurt, and then he went, was running around braying. So then again he came to attack Balaram, kicking with his hind legs. Huh? So then Balaram, he caught the hind legs of Denakasur and <laughs> like a helicopter, very, very, very fast. Denakasur actually died from the centripetal force of being swung around. And then Balaram let go and he went up in the air and he landed on the top of the tourist tal tree and the tal tree was broken and fell down and he hit another one and another one and many trees fell down like dominoes. So then, all the other associates of Denakasura, they came running there and they attacked Krishna. So Krishna was grabbing them by the hind legs and others, Balarama. So now the two brothers were... <laughs> and throwing the donkeys in all different directions. And the boys were cheering, yeah, go on Krishna, Balaram. They were very happy. They were throwing their sticks and balls at the donkeys also. They also joined in. And very soon... Denikasur and all his associates, they were dead. The broken trees were decorated with the different colored dead donkeys. And also they died, passing stool and urine. So then no one wanted to eat the tal fruits. They lost their appetite <laughs> because the tal fruits were contaminated. Yeah. This pastime has very profound meaning. 
First of all, Denakasur, the ass demon, he represents avidya, ignorance. Person who is affected by avidya, ignorance, becomes exactly like a donkey. Hmm? So, first symptom of donkey is that a donkey is working hard all day. Hmm? Because at the end of the day, he thinks, my master will give me some grass. What he does not know is that grass is everywhere and it's free. Mm -hmm. But he's still working the whole day. Hmm? What does that mean? That means, Tasyaiva heito prayate to ko vido na labyate yad brahmatam upariyada talabyate dukavadanita sukam kalena sabata gabira ranghasa. Persons who are actually intelligent and philosophically inclined will endeavor for that purposeful end of life which cannot be attained by wandering even up to Brahmalok, to the top of the universe and down to the bottom of the universe. Round and round. There's something that you cannot find anywhere. What is that? Love for God. Try to endeavor for that. But instead of endeavoring for love for God, what do people do? They engage in karma. Because they think that by doing karma, I will enjoy some fruit. But, nalabhyate dukavad anyatasukam. The meaning is that no one endeavors for misery, suffering. Hmm? If you ask someone, what are you doing today? I'm working very hard, I want my car to be stolen, my house to burn down and my children to become sick. Hmm? Maybe I could break my leg along the way. And no one is working to have a disaster and problems and suffering in their life. Huh? But does it come? Do problems come or not? Problems are coming like waves in the ocean, one after another, endless. So in this, just as dukkha, suffering <coughs> comes by itself, automatically, without any endeavor. So in the same way, happiness comes by itself, without any endeavor. Nothing to do. So you don't have to work for that. It, everything will come by itself. So, mm, this is a donkey. The persons in this world who are working hard to enjoy, they're like the donkeys. They don't know. By the karma of their last life, you will get only that much, not more and not less, of suffering and enjoyment, both things. So, my good Dave used to say, give up your donkiness. He invented this word, donkiness. It does, it's not in the English dictionary. Yeah? Give up your donkiness. Also in Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Yashasma buddhi kunupeti dat ke swadit kalatari shubhoma ijadut if a person thinks that the, my body is myself, my atma, body is myself. If a person thinks uh, my family members are mine, they belong to me. If someone thinks the place of my birth is uh, great and worshipable. Hmm? Vive la France, <laughs> Deutschland du Bales, Rule Britannia, God bless America. So, if you're thinking like this, then, or if you think the holy place is the water, you go to a holy place and you bathe in the water, but you don't associate with the Rasik Vaishnavas who are there, then, Saiva go Kara, definitely you are a donkey, according to Srimad Bhagavatam. So, this is describing four types of buddhi. <coughs> Four types of buddhi, Atma buddhi, Nija buddhi, Ija buddhi, and Tirtha buddhi. Atma buddhi, who am I? Nija buddhi, what is mine? Ija buddhi, what is worshipable for me? And Tirtha buddhi, what is a holy place? So these things are directed for those who have a consciousness like a donkey. The body is myself, my family members are mine, the place of my birth, my country is worshipable. And the holy place is the water, the Ganges river just flowing, or any lake. This is a Tirtha. So, when our consciousness changes, and we, Janesi Abhigeshu, those who are Abhigya, have realization in Bhajan, when those Vaishnavas become the object of all these types of Buddhi, then we move from the level of Konishta Adhikari to Madhya Adhikari. From the first stage of Vaishnavism, spiritual life, it is not really his Vaishnava pride, not really devotee yet. <laughs> and really become a Vaishnava, that is the Madhyam Adhikari. So, uh, when do we enter that middle stage? 
in devotional practice and actually become a Vaishnava. When we have Atma Buddhi, who is my soul? My Vaishnava is my soul. Who is my family? My Vaishnava is my family. Who is worshipable for me? The Vaishnava, the pure devotee is worshipable for me. And where is the holy place? Where the Vaishnava is, that's the holy place. But, and so when we move our uh, buddhi from these four different things and place it all in a Vaishnava, then we have entered into Madhimarikai, Prema Maikri, Kripo Peksha, Sakaroti Samadhyamaha. Understand? So, uh, if we don't do this, then we're covered by avidya. And uh, Denakasu, the donkey, rec represents this avidya. Balaram is a Kanda Guru Tattva, the original Guru. Because the living being cannot get rid of avidya by himself, therefore, mm, he needs the help of Guru. This is illustrated. Balaram is uh, killing Denakasur to show us that without the Guru Tattva, we cannot become free from avidya. So, Another symptom of a donkey is uh, the donkey is always chasing after the female donkey. And uh, running after the female donkey, and she kicks him in the face many times, but still he chases her, and still she kicks him, and still he chases her. So this is also the symptom of avidya, chasing after the opposite sex, even though you have been kicked in the face so many times, and uh, you have lost all your money and your house and everything. Yeah? I have a friend who is a doctor. So one of his patients came to visit him and he gave him a health checkup. So, and uh, the, his, the patient he was saying, um, I'm thinking of getting married. Hmm? I'm looking for, I have no candidates, but I want to get married. <laughs> and so the doctor said to him, but you have already been married three times. <laughs> hmm? So, I think that your health is okay, but your mental health is <laughs> lacking. Huh? He said, I tell, I'll give you some advice to save you some time. Find a woman that you don't like and buy her house. <laughs> <laughs> so, understand? <laughs> so, this uh, attraction between the mm, genders in this world, this is all coming from avidya. So the donkey is a symbol of this, and Valdeva was killed that donkey, Denakasur. Another reason uh, why Baladev killed Denakasur. In in the spring, in the rainy season, the rain comes down and everything becomes green everywhere, like now. Now. Is the festival Julan Yatra is going on, Hariyali Tij, the green, the time of greenery. So when everything is green, a donkey is uh, all day chewing, eating the grass. But because there's greenery everywhere, even though he ate so much, but he looks around and thinks, I have not eaten anything. And then he becomes skinny. He's actually eating so much grass, but it's a psychosomatic illness. That because he sees grass everywhere, the donkey becomes skinny because he thinks, I have not eaten anything. And then when the summer season comes, and there's no grass everywhere, it's all dried and died. Then the donkey is eating very little. And he looks around and says, I have eaten everything. And then he becomes fat. Mm -hmm. This is psychosomatic. So, what does it illustrate? It means that when the living entity in this world is affected by avidya and he's looking around I have a big house and so many cars and I have built a business, a business and I have a very big bank balance and so many things and everyone respects me he's looking around and then he, he feels very fat I am very successful, look at all of these things I have done but what did he do? nothing he did nothing it was the fruit of the karma from the previous life. Only out of a hunkar ego, he's thinking, I've done everything. Mm -hmm. And then that person, if you invite him, oh, come to Brajmanda Parikrama. So then he will leave Switzerland or Germany, wherever we are. I think we crossed the border, right? We're in Germany. <laughs> so then he will fly to India and spend a whole month walking around in the heat and in the dust, going around Govardhan and Vrindavan and all different places. Hmm? And then in the end, then he thinks, oh, 
What did I get from this? Whole months I spent doing nothing. I didn't earn any money and I spent a lot of money coming here and everything. So I've done nothing. So just as, just as the donkey thinks, I have eaten everything when he has not eaten anything. Or he thinks, I have not eaten anything when he's done so much. So similarly, the conditioned soul, when he's doing karma, and he thinks, I've, look, I've created so much. He thinks he's done so many things, but he did nothing. Because his soul is sleeping. Yani bhutanam tasyam jagrati samyami. What is day for the uh, sage is night for the living entity in Maya and vice versa. Only the ego is going on. He's completely in Maya. Hmm? And when that person goes and actually does parakrama in Brandavan, then every step that he's taking. Hmm? Santa Milana ke chali, chajo abhiman, jojo pak agaitari, koti jagya saman. Tosi das. He has said that, oh, my dear friend, let's go and meet with the sadhu. Let's go and parakrama. But before you go, give up your abhiman, give up your ego first. And then what to speak of when we arrive there, every step that you take in the direction of, a, of the sadhu is more than 10 million Ashwamedha Jagyas. Mm -hmm. So when a person is engaged in bhakti, when a person is walking around Brindavan or Govardhan, hearing, chanting and remembering with Vaishnavas, he's making mountains of Sukriti. Sukriti and Sanskars. Mm -hmm. These Sanskars are very rare and they are essential for getting taste in your relationship with the Supreme Lord. But the person out of a vidya, thinking, oh, serving Guru and Vaishnavas, doing bhakti, waking up early in the morning and serving all day and wandering here and there, and at the end of it I have nothing to show for that. Huh? But actually, he cannot see a big shining mountain of Sukriti has made, which is uh, priceless. It is so valuable, more than all the jewels in the universe. Huh? But if you do karma, which is nothing, then he thinks, I have done so many things. Huh? So this is Maya. Avidya. So, Prema Bhakti Ja Hoite Avidya Avinashayate. By the association and service of Sri Gurudev, then our Avidya can be destroyed and pray in pure love for Sri Krishna will enter into the heart. So, uh, these are some of the significances of Balaram killing Denukasura. After some time, Krishna and Balaram and all the friends were playing together. And they decided to make two teams. And uh, whichever team would win the game, then the losing team would carry those boys on their shoulders. So Balaram was in one team and uh, Krishna was in another team. So in that, uh, the other team was led by Sridham. So Sridham defeated Krishna in wrestling. And so... Krishna's team, they had to carry uh, the Balaram's team on their shoulders. So Krishna was carrying Sridham on his shoulders. And, uh, and uh, Balaram won. So Balaram got on the shoulders of a boy who was in Krishna's group. But this boy was not a boy. It was a demon named Pralambasur. So Pralambasur had come. He had been sent to Braj by Kamsamaraj to kill Krishna. But he was thinking, I'll kill his brother first because his older brother always protects him. Then I'll kill Krishna. So he took Balaram on his shoulders and then as they were, they had to carry each other to a certain spot. But when they got to that spot, this boy continued. He kept going. Then Balaram, he became heavier and heavier and the demon could not hold him in his boy form. So he manifested his actual demon form. Very, very huge. Then he went up into the sky. He began to fly in the sky. His body was black. His hair was red. He had big tusks that went up to his eyes. Like this. Very ferocious. And at first when the boy manifested this huge form. And Balaam was going up into the air. Balaam was, what is this? He was anxious. He, he felt some fear. And then the next moment he thought, I am Balaam. <laughs> and he punched him in the head and broke his head open and he came crashing down and all the boys were cheering Jai Baladev, Jai Baladev uh -huh. so 
And Krishna was laughing. Why? Because it was Krishna's desire. He wanted to play a trick on Balaram. That by his desire, he kept Balaram covered by Yoga Maya. So Balaram would be afraid. And then suddenly, when it was a very critical moment, then Krishna said, okay, let him understand. And then Balaram realized, I'm Balaram. I can save myself from this. <laughs> and he killed the demon. So Pralambasu was dead. Who is Pralambasu? Pralambasu is the hypocrisy. Duplicity. This is the main problem of the conditioned souls in this world. Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Thakur, he said, Vaishnava Saralata, e Vaishnavata. What is Vaishnavism? Simplicity. It doesn't matter if you are foolish. It does not matter if you are uneducated. It does not matter if you are poor. It does not matter if you have no skills or expertise or you are not beautiful or, or educated, wealthy or anything. These things don't matter. Huh? If you are fallen, you have many anartas, you have many desires, you have many misconceptions. Huh? But just be honest. Srila Bhaktanotaku has written the Kirtan. Amara jivana sadapa pera chaka nahiko purnyara lesha parer udvega diyachi yeko tu diyachi jivera klesha My whole life I was sinful. I gave many problems to others. When I see others being successful, then I feel sad. But when others fail, then I feel very great satisfaction. I am angry and lusty. And I am very offensive. And there is no way out. I cannot get out from this. This is a confession. Every conditioned soul is corrupt to the core. Don't think I am good. Every conditioned soul is corrupt to the core. And the only good quality they can have is to try to be honest about it. I am a fallen soul. See Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. Doya Kura More. Tomo Bina Ke Dalu Jagata Sansari. Patita Pavana He Tu Tavavata. O Mahaprabhu, you came into the world to save the fallen persons. I am such a fallen person. You won't find anyone more fallen than me. O Nityananda Prabhu, I am suffering so much. Please give me your merciful glance. So, Baladev Prabhu. He is serving not only in Krishna but in all Leelas. In Ram Leela he becomes Lakshman, the younger brother. But as the younger brother he had to follow the orders of the elder brother. So sometimes he had to do things he, that were very difficult, he didn't want to do, such as take seat to, to the forest and leave her there in the ashram of Valmiki Rishi. So Lakshman was thinking, oh this is, I don't want to be the younger brother. So then in the next incarnation became Balaram, the elder brother. Huh? And he found that was a very good policy, so in the next incarnation he, he stuck with that. And became Nityananda, <laughs> elder brother Nityananda Prabhu. In Gauralila. Uh, so, the duplicity is the problem. So, Saralata e Vaishnavata, the, the quality of a Vaishnava is just to be honest. Don't try to hide your anartas and problems from Guru. If you try to hide your problems, then it will be like a cancer and it will spread everywhere and they will finish you off. But if you go to advanced Vaishnavas and say, Oh Gurudev, Oh Vaishnav Thakur, Oh Prabhu, I have this problem. Just by opening your heart, then by their mercy it will disappear. My Gurudev said <coughs> that when he was a young devotee, he was serving very hard all the time and sometimes he came into class and while the Harikata was going on, then he used to feel sleepy and sometimes fall asleep. So he came to Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami, his Guru, Guru Dev, and said, Oh, I, am, I have this problem, I fall asleep in the class. And then Param Guru Dev said, Oh, from today you will not have that problem. And then from that day, he was completely attentive. In all Harikata, and never felt any tiredness again. So, uh, that Baladev, that is a Kandaguru Tattva, has killed Pralambasur, uh, shows that we cannot become free from duplicity unless we, uh, unless we approach Gurudev and confess. I also, I am, we can be honest, I have duplicity. <laughs> we can be honest about that too. And by their mercy, then this Chitta Vikara, this contamination, this distortion of our consciousness can be cleansed away. And the heart can become <coughs> neat and clean and shiny then realization will appear there. So when uh, when Akrura 
came to Vrindavan. He could not persuade Krishna to leave. He persuaded Balaram. He said, your father Basudev is in jail there. So you have to come and help him. So that when Krishna saw that his brother had been convinced, then Krishna agreed. So you can see the very important role Baladev plays in all of Krishna's various leelas. When Krishna and Balaram were in uh, Dwarka, in the Dwarka Leela, we see that sometimes Krishna and Balaram uh, quarrel with each other. This is very astonishing. Because Keshava Drita Halada Rupa, Krishna himself has become Balaram. So then how can he quarrel with himself? So this is Naravach Leela. Human-like pastimes. Because in human life, with your brothers and sisters and family members, from time to time some quarrel comes about. Doesn't mean there's not love. Love is there. It's a prema kalaha. Loving quarrel. But some disagreement comes up. So we see this also uh, many times in uh, Krishna Lila. For example, um, Balaram Prabhu, he's the martial arts guru of Duryodhan. He taught Duryodhan club fighting. So when the conflict came, the Mahabharat Yuddha, so then Balaram, he didn't want to uh, fight uh, on, because he would have to fight on Krishna's side against his disciple. So Balaram said, I'm going on Parikrama. And he went on visiting all the holy places all over India. So while Balaram was traveling here and there, he gradually arrived at the place called Naimisharanya. And there, Roma Harshan Sut, who is the fifth disciple of Vyasadeva, you know, he gave the four Vedas to four disciples. Pailo Rishi, Jamini Rishi, Vaisampayan Rishi, and Angiri Rishi. Then he gave the fifth Veda, that is the Puranas, to Roma Harshan Sut. So all the sages were gathered there and Ramaharsha and Sut was speaking to Puranas. Baladeva arrived and when Baladeva arrived, thousands and thousands of rishis all stood up and then bowed with folded hands to Baladeva Prabhu. But uh, Ramaharsha and Sut was sitting on the Vyasasan and he did not get up. Hmm? This is a great offense. Because the, the asana is the Vyasasan. It is the seat of Vyas. And Vyas is also Vedaista Sarva Ahameva Vedyo Vedanta Krit Veda Eva Chaham. He is also Krishna's manifestation. So the Vyasasan is the place of Guru Tattva. No one can uh, sit on the Vyasasan and represent themselves. They have to represent their Guru Parampara. So now Akanda Guru Tattva, the original Guru himself, has come. But Ramakrishna should did not get up to give him respect. So it was an offense. So to t give this teaching to the world, that those who take the service of uh, speaking, the, the Puranas, the Bhagavatam, Shastra, Vedanta, then they have to represent Vyasadeva, not themselves, and they should not have the ego, I am a Guru. Anything, anyone who thinks I am Guru, he is not a Guru, he is a Kanguru. <laughs> Because Kangaroo has a pocket here and he's just trying to collect money from his disciples and put it in his pocket. So, to give a warning to all those Kangaroos, then Baladev, he took one uh, straw, one blade of kush grass and he came to Ramaharshan Sut and he just poked him with the grass and at once Ramaharshan Sut was dead. So then, all the Rishi said, Hi, hi, hi! What will we do now? We came here to listen to the Puranas for a thousand years. But now the speaker of the Puranas has passed away. From whom will we hear? So then Baladev said, Oh, I'll bring him back to life if you want. <laughs> the Rishi said, No, no, no. You are Supreme Lord. Whatever you do, it should not be changed. But come up with another solution. From whom can we hear the Puranas? So Ramaharshan Sut, his young son was there. His little boy. And he called him, come here. And Balray, Balram put his hand on his head and blessed him. Mangalam Bhavatu. And when Balram blessed him, then all the Veda, Vedanta, Purana, Upanishads, everything manifested in the heart of that boy. And uh, he became Sutta Goswami. And he was blessed by Balram with uh, 
tenacious hearing power. He had ferocious, tenacious, insatiable hearing power. So his name was became Ugrasrava. Ugrasrava, who has tenacious hearing power. And so when when Shukadev Goswami spoke to Srimad Bhagavatam to Prikshit Maharaj, Suta Goswami was in the audience. He's also a disciple of Shukadev Goswami. And so because he's Ugra Sarva by the power of Balaram, the blessing of Balaram, he heard every single word. And the Srimad Bhagavatam that we have is actually Sutta Goswami's recital. Understand? And therefore, we are speaking about how Balaram has manifest everything for Krishna's service. Even without Balaram, we would not have Srimad Bhagavatam. Because the Bhagavatam is coming from the blessing of Baldev Prabhu to Ugra Sarva or Sutta Goswami. Huh? Balaram Prabhu ki jai! Yay! So, once it happened, in Dwarka, that Balaram was thinking, now my sister, my younger sister, Subhadra, she's coming of an age when she should be married. So, I think it would be very good if she would marry my very good martial arts student, <laughs> Duryodhana. <laughs> so, Balaram, he presented the idea to the whole family. And no one wanted it. But Baram is a very strong personality. And everyone was <laughs> smiling. But they really didn't want it. But they were afraid to say anything to Baram. Subhadra herself didn't want to marry uh, Duryodhan. And she was praying, oh, what can I do, what can I do? So then Krishna came up with a good idea. Duryodhan was very happy with the arrangement. Because Duryodhan knew war was coming. And if he would marry Krishna's sister, then all the Yadu warriors would be on his side against the Pandavas. So it was for him more of a political move. Krishna was thinking, it would be better if my sister would be married to Arjun. Uh -huh. So he, t he called Arjun and he made a plan. Arjun disguised himself as a sannyasi. And uh, Krishna, he told someone, Oh, there is a great sannyasi has arrived in Dwarka. He has all mystic powers. And uh, if anyone will bow down to him, give pranam, give pranami, some donation to him, then whatever they desire, all their desires will come true. So Krishna told one person, they told another, and it went round. The rumor went all round to Dwarka. And Krishna was with his family. And someone said, Hey, did you hear? There's some great sannyasi has come to Dwarka. <laughs> Krishna's really? <laughs> what is his quality? He's so great that if you give pranam and pranami to him, then whatever desire you have will be fulfilled. Subhadra was thinking, oh, I don't, I desire to not get married to Duryodhana. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So, hmm, Krishna said to Subhadra, oh, why don't you go and give respect to this sadhu? So then, uh, Subhadra, she dressed herself very, very beautifully, all in red. Hmm? Red is very significant. If it were on, a, on a wedding day also, a woman wears red. And with uh, uh, Sola Sringa, Dwadash Abaran, hmm, 12 types of golden ornaments and 16 types of cosmetics. So she was very beautifully dressed. And she went just outside Dwarka, where that sadhu, he was doing his bhajan and austerities in the hut. <laughs> So when she came there, and she gave pranam, and gave some pranami, then that sannyasi jumped up, and caught her by the hand. And in a hidden place was his chariot. And then she realized, ah, it's Arjun. <laughs> so Subhadra was already very attracted to Arjun, so she was so happy. So then, uh, Arjun took her, and they got on the chariot. But then Balaram was there, and with the, with the Sena, the Yadu Sena, the warriors of the, of the Yadu dynasty, and he said, oh, Arjun stealing our sister. We have to kill him. So he sent the, ar oh, the army. So then Arjun said to Subhadra, you drive the chariot. And he took his bow and arrows was on the chariot. So Subhadra was driving and Arjun was facing backwards to fight anyone who tried to follow them. So then Balaram said to Krishna, Arjun stealing our sister. We have to kill him. So then Krishna said, Balaram, just be, please sit down, be quiet. <laughs> Why are you objecting to this? Hmm? Don't you know 
to get to marry someone by kidnapping. This is our family tradition. <laughs> huh? Remember when I, I kidnapped Rukmini myself and you helped me. What's this is called Rakshasa Vivaha actually. Hmm? So the Katrias they're very fond of this. If you want to bribe, just steal her, fight with everyone and take her. That's how you show your heroism. So Chris said, why are you complaining? This is our tradition in our family. I stole Rukmini and you also helped. Also, what about Samba as well? He was stealing his bride, he got caught. You even fought with Duryodhana over that. So why are you complaining? And if you go and you try and kill Arjun, if you kill Arjun now, then your sister will be a widow for a whole life because she's already given her heart to him. In Vedic culture, you can only give your heart one time. Never again. So your own sister will cry for her whole life. Do you want that? And also, you are saying that Arjun is stealing our sister, but it's not true. Look who's driving. I think that our sister is stealing Arjun. <laughs> so then Balram, he looked at Vasudev Maharaj. Vasudev Maharaj looked down. He looked at Devaki. Devaki looked down. He looked at Rohini. Rohini looked down. And he saw that the whole family was against him. <laughs> so then he, he agreed to Krishna's proposal. All right, let it be. Let our sister be married to Arjuna. So this is called Premakala, loving quarrel between Krishna and Balaram. Very beautiful. Only by Yoga Maya, eh, by this Naravat Leela, human like pastimes. When the Leela of Krishna is human-like, then it is called Madhurya. Sweet. Sweet and beautiful. Krishna and Balaram also, they got into another mm, quarrel once. Perhaps you know that in the, at the end of the Mahabharata Yuddha, there was a big fight between Bhimsen and Duryodhan. Club fight. So just when that club fight was beginning, Balaram, who had been visiting all the holy places, he came <coughs> to Kurukshetra because that's also Dharmakshetra, Kurukshetra. It's also, it was actually the prominent holy place in uh, the Dwarpa Yuga. So Balaram came there and uh, Balaram, he was watching the fight between his student and Bhimsen. So Bhimsen was stronger, but Duryodhan had more skill. And also the whole body of Duryodhan was harder than a thunderbolt. He had been made impregnable by the power of the glance of Gandhari. By her chastity, she made him invincible. But because his mother told him, you should come in the middle of the night, but come with no clothing. And just when he was about to go into Gandhari's room, Krishna said to Duryodhana, where are you going? So I'm going to see my mother. You can't go like that, at least put a gumsha on. So Krishna tricked him into putting on a gamsha, so he was covered from the waist to the knee. So when she took off her blindfold, he became invincible everywhere, but his, his thigh was still vulnerable. So they were fighting for many days, and there was no winner. So finally, Krishna made a signal to Bhim Sain. Strike his thigh. Now, in it's one of the rules of the Gada Yudha, club fighting, that you cannot strike below the waist. But anyway, Bhim Sain, he struck Duryodhan below the waist and broke his thigh and he fell to the ground. Now he was finished. So when Balaram saw this, then he became angry. He said, this is an injustice, this is against the rules. This is an injustice. I'll kill Bhima. Krishna said, Balaram, please calm down. <laughs> Today you have arrived just in time to see this injustice. But where were you on that day? When Dushashan was tearing off the cloth of Draupadi on the order of Duryodhan. What did you do about injustice on that day? Where were you on the day when Duryodhan tried to burn the Pandavas alive in the house of Lak? Where were you on that day? Where were you on the day when Duryodhan gave poison to Bhimsen? Hmm? So in, in this way, he was, Krishna was reminding. He said, where were you? When our nephew Abhimanyu uh, entered into the Chakravyuha of the Kauravas and then he was surrounded by Duryodhan, Dusashan, Shakuni, the Dronacharya, Ashwatthama. <clears throat> Where were you then? Six warriors 
all fought it and killed him at the same time. Right? This is also the injustice against the rules of war. Where were you then, Balaram? Hmm? So then Balaram, hearing all these arguments of Krishna, then he became calm and did kill Bhim Singh. So this is the Prem Kala, loving quarrel. By this, all sweetness comes. Because if Krishna and Bharam will both be omniscient and know I am you and you are me, then they will, they'll have, they cannot disagree on anything. Huh? But when Yoga Maya comes, and there is the Anusandan Abhav, the absence of investigation, and human-like pastimes, then uh, all the natural loving relationship, like family relationship is there between Krishna and Balaram. So, you know that when Krishna was in Mathura, he sent Uddhav to Braj. So up till that point, the bridge buses were maintaining their life because Krishna said, I see I He sent a message, I will return. Oh, just after a few days. So they had some hope that Krishna would return. But when Uddhav came, and Uddhav delivered Krishna's message to the bridge basis, especially the Krishna's message to the gopis. Huh? What was that message? I am everywhere, inside and out. Just as the clay in a clay pot can never be separated from the clay pot. So, oh my dear gopis, you can never be separated from me. We are always together. So, Dvastha Jiva Kosha. Their hope that Krishna would come back was broken. So Uddhav, he said, Oh, I'll, I'll go to Mathura just now and I'll send him. I'll bring him myself. He promised them before he left. But when he left, now their hope was oh, very, very fine. There was hardly a glimmer of hope that Krishna would come. So when Balaram came to Braj from uh, Dwarka, the separation of the bridge buses was even higher than when Uddhav came. So when Balram came, then, as you know, he did Rasalila at that place which is called now Ramgarh. When Krishna and Balram were in Vrindavan, there were some gopis who were too young to go to Rasalila. And there were some gopis who, during the Holy Lila, when Shankachuda came, there were some gopis who were looking at Balaram from far away and they were very attracted to him. But Balaram did know Ras Lila during Braj Lila. But afterwards, uh, when he was in Dwarka and he came back to Braj, those gopis who were too young had grown up. Uh, and those who were attracted, all they met with him. And Balaram did uh, the Ras Lila in Ramkat. So, when Balaram was there, then the goddess Varuni appeared from the trees and they were, he was drinking and became intoxicated and he saw that his beloved gopis were perspiring and in this case Balram was in the mood of De Lalit Nayak that means Sa Praya Prayasi Vashaha who is controlled by the love of his beloved so that means that such a hero feels that my heroine should not undergo any inconvenience at all. So if she's perspiring and she wants to cool down by having a dip in the fragrant and cool river Jamuna, then she should not have the inconvenience of having to walk all the way there. So Balaram was intoxicated and being controlled by the love of those gopis, he called the river Jamuna, Hey Kalindi, come on! Kalindi, come! But the goddess Kalindi she was thinking, I should not go near a drunk person, so she didn't come. <laughs> so then Balaram manifest his plow weapon. It's part of his swarup. Manifest. It's always there, but you cannot see. His plow weapon manifested. And he came to Jamuna, and he put his plow, and he began to pull. And he threatened, I'll oh, cut you into thousands of rivulets in all direction. So then the goddess Kalindi came out of the river and offered prayers to Balaram. So... There are many profound details here. One thing is this, that this is not Yamuna Devi, whom we are worshipping. Mampunatu Sarvadaravinda Bandhu Nandini. 
Chirananda Bano, Sadananda Suno, Parapayam Patri, Drava Brahma Katri, Aganam Lavitri, Jakasimitati, Pavitri Kriyano, Vapu, Mr. Pudi. Not this. Huh? Because that Yamuna is Krishna Saki. Hmm? Krishna Saki. So for Balaram to order her and say, Serve me, this Balaram cannot do that. That would be Rasabas. That would be uh, against the principles of Rasa. So that is a goddess Kalindi who is a Prakash, an expansion of Krishna's que Queen Kalindi in Dwarka. She was there and Balaram was interacting with her. So there's opulence in this. That Varuni Devi, the goddess, appeared from the trees. That his plough appeared. Krishna has no chakra in Vrindavan. Balaram has no plough in Vrindavan. But because this is in the level of Dwarka Lila, some Aishwarya is there. And she is a goddess of the expansion of the um, Kalindi in Dwarka. So all these ingredients are actually of Aishwarya. So there are two Rasalilas. Krishna's Rasalila is the manifestation of full Madhurya. And when Balaram does Rasalila, it's a manifestation of Aishwarya. Actually, they're not on the same level from the perspective of Rasa Tattva. So Balaram also did Rasalila with Krishna's gopis. Now everyone will say, oh. <laughs> and even Jiva Goswami has written that Balaram did not do Ras... Uh, he, sorry, that Balaram did Rasalila with his own gopis. Now what it means is this, that with his own gopis, he can have very intimate pastimes in Nikunjas. But with Krishna's gopis, he does Ras, that Ras means singing, dancing and playing musical instruments as a service to his brother Krishna. Why? Because he's come to pacify those gopis' separation. Now, first of all, there is nothing lusty in their, uh, in their singing, dancing and playing musical instruments. Secondly, uh, even the demigods in heaven, when the males and females meet and sing and dance together, it's not illegal in heaven. If they have a different... Uh, because they don't have gross bodies, they have subtle bodies. So they have a different morality. So they enjoy sense gratification so much there without any reaction in the heavenly planets. So if in heaven to sing and dance with the, between male and female uh, with whom you are not married, it is not uh, illegal or against Dharma, then what to speak of Balaram who is from Goloka Vrindavan. So there's no fault in this. And secondly, in the Balaram in relation to his own gopis has Seve Abhiman, but in relation, Seve, uh, Seve Abhiman, they should serve me. But in relation to Krishna's gopis, he has Sevaka Abhiman. So he's there only to serve them, to speak and sing and remind them of Krishna. So when uh, Baladev was uh, uh, inspiring the gopis in the remembrance of Krishna and their pastimes with Krishna, then the gopis, they felt great joy. But then the next moment, hmm, their separation became double. And they began to cry. And when Balaram saw the separation of the, of the gopis, then Balaram became so absorbed in remembering Krishna, he became black. So in Braj Mandal, if you go to the ancient temple of Dauji, hmm, the old temple of Balaram, which is established by Bhadranab, Krishna's great-grandson, Balaram is black. Huh? Because it, when he met with Krishna's gopis, seeing their separation, he became so absorbed in Krishna, that his light complexion went away and he became sham complexion. So then Balaram was crying, Oh Krishna, Oh Kanaya, how could you leave Braj Gopis? Please come at once. And by the mm, heart's desire of Balaram, there and then, see Krishna appeared in thousands of forms and in thousands of forms, Krishna took each Gopi by the hand and took them into their individual separate kunjas and very beautiful pastimes took place. So, Balaram is the Guru Tattva. Those who are feeling separation from Sri Krishna, he arranges that they can meet with Sri Krishna. Of course, we don't want a direct relation with Krishna, but we want to meet with Krishna in the context of arranging his meeting with, with Radharani. So, this is a beautiful uh, pastime. Balaram has his own Ras Lila, and then he has a special pastime of inspiring the remembrance of Krishna in meeting with Braj Gopis and then he himself felt so much separation and felt so much uh, sympathy for them that he called Krishna and Krishna appeared there 
and all the desires of Prajagopis were fulfilled. So Balaram is our very dearest. In our Sambandha Gyan, in our Sampradaya, because we want to be the Dasis of Radhika, then Madishana Tatwe Brajapipina Chandram Bajome Tam Sorim Tam Na Tatwe Tada Tula Sakitwe Tulalitam Vishaksham Vishakam Shikshali Vitarna Gurutwe Priyasro Grindo Tat Prakshala Litarati Datwe Smarmana. Sila Raghunathaska Swami said, Madishana Tatwe Krishna is not my uh, direct uh, hero, he is the Nath of Radhika. He is the beloved of my Swamini Radhika. So, this relationship is there. So, in Vedic culture, if a woman is married to a man, then she has a very respectful relationship with his elder brother. So, Radhika and her gopis, though Radha and Krishna are not married, but they feel in their heart that this is the actual marriage by the rules of praying, not by the rules of dharma. Hmm? Krishna stole the clothes of the Brajagopis. This was their unofficial wedding ceremony. <laughs> because uh, no man can see a woman naked except for her husband. So when the Gopis, they took off their cloth and bathed in Jamuna, and Krishna stole their cloth. And then they go told them, come out from the water and I'll give you a cloth. Then this was Krishna saying, oh, you are mine by the rules of praying. Relationship by the rules of praying. So they have to hide that in the Parakya Lila. They have to hide that. But still, they have that feeling. So if uh, Radharani will see Balaram, Radharani, from a distance, from a hidden place, she'll give pranam to him. Because she feels he's the elder brother of my beloved. But she cannot do it openly because someone will suspect that she has a relationship with Krishna. And Balaram knows that no one loves Krishna more than Radharani. So that when Krishna's uh, leaving the village in the morning or coming back in the evening, then Balaram knows, oh my brother, he'll want to exchange some glances with Radhika and Gopis and he'll be somewhat inhibited in my presence. So Balaram makes some excuse and he goes a little bit ahead. So, Vaktram Brajesha Sutayora Nuvenu Jushtam Yavani Pita Manurakta Kataksha Moksha. Balaram's going ahead and Krishna's following behind in the distance. So, so Balaram is very sensitive, he knows. Uh, and he gives his younger brother some space for his romance without being embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So, there are some very beautiful verses in Srimad Bhagavatam of conversation between Krishna and Balaram. Comes in 10th Canto, chapter 15. Mm -hmm. So, in the beginning of that chapter, it's described how Krishna and Balaram, all the coward boys, they're going into the forest. And the forest is very beautiful. And Krishna's walking and he puts his hand on the shoulder of his brother and he's pointing out the beauty of the forest to Balaram. And he says, oh Balaram, look at these trees. You are Adipurush. You are Supreme Lord. And when the trees see you coming, then... Oh, the flowers and fruits come and they become so heavy with fruit that it weighs down their branches. And the, by that, the trees are bowing down at your lotus feet, Balaram. Mm -hmm. And by bowing down at your lotus feet, they become free from their sins by which they have taken birth as trees. Huh? Because to take birth as a tree, you have to be sinful because it's a very fallen birth. So Krishna is speaking like it's sweet. Actually, the trees in Vrindavan are not sinful at all mm -hmm. because Lord Brahma's Lord Brahma is praying, Oh, I, if only I could take birth, even any birth in Braj, even as a stone. Hmm? A stone in Gokul, what to speak of on the other side of Jamuna, in, in Brindavan. So, uh, these trees, they're actually Krishna's Nitya Parika, eternal associates, they have pure love. But Krishna is speaking like a human being. By their sins, uh, they have taken birth as trees and now they are bowing down to Balaram and they will become free from all sins by this. So then Krishna saw the bumblebees that were following them. And Krishna said, E teili nastava yasho kila lokatirtam 
gayanti ad purushanupatam bhajante prayo ami munigana bhavadiya mukya gudham banipi na jahatya na gatvadaivam hey balaram you see these bumblebees they are following after you being eager to uh, take the nectar of the fragrance of your body I think that these uh, bees, they're humming. But if you listen very carefully, they're singing your glories. Your glories purify the whole world. They are themselves a place of pilgrimage. I think that these bumblebees, they're not really bumblebees, but they're your intimate associates. They are actually great moonies. In your former Sankarshan, there are many sages and rishis offering Vedic mantras. But you are here in Pandavan having secret loving pastimes. And so if those rishis will come following around with their long beards and Vedic mantras, it will be very inhibiting for you. <laughs> so they are very clever and very rasik. So those rishis have took the form of bumblebees. <laughs> and they follow you wherever you go. And when you secretly meet with your beloved in a kunj, at that time none of your friends or any of your associates will go. But they can go and they can see your pastimes and you're not even upset with them. You don't take offense that they're following you around. Mm -hmm. Anagatma Daivam, he says. Anagatma means one who's anaga, they have no sins. Mm -hmm. huh? So here it means you don't take offense from them. The, the, the implication is that if someone says something or do something, you become upset. It's because you are sinful. Understand? You become upset with someone, that's not their problem. It's because you're sinful. Mm. Because if your heart was pure, you would just say, Tattenu kampam su samikshamano. Everything that's happening to me is just Krishna's mercy. Mm. Huh? So we take offense to others due to our own sins. Mm. So Krishna called Baram Anagatma Daivam, that uh, your, your heart is pure. So when these rishis take the form of bumblebees and go in the kunj, <laughs> then you don't take offense. So, then... See, Krishna said, mm. Oh, Baram, look. The peacocks are dancing. And the birds are singing. So, that is because you are a great sadhu. When a sadhu comes, then he should be greeted with singing and dancing. Mm. And look at this. Danyayam <coughs> adhya Dharani Trinavirudastvat Padas Prisho Drumalatha Karajabhimrista Nadyodraya Kaga Mriga Sadaya Valokai Gopyantari Nabujaya Apiyats Prihasri Today the earth became fortunate. Because she is touched by your lotus feet, Balaram. Hmm? Not only the earth of Brajabhumi is fortunate, but also hmm, by Druma Lataha Karajabi Mishra, the trees and the creepers on the trees are fortunate because they've been touched by your fingernails. That means when Krishna and Balaram are picking flowers, then they pinch the the, the creeper on the tree with the fingernails and take the take the flower. So kara kara means uh, hand and ja means born. So what's born from your hand? Your fingernails are born. Now. So kara ja bi mistaha. The, the trees and creepers are so fortunate because they they have the touch of your fingernails, and also the nadyo nadyaha. The rivers are fortunate because you jump in the rivers and the rivers embrace your body completely. And Adraya, the mountains, because you climb the mountains and play on the peaks of the mountains and enter into the caves of the mountains. And Kagamriga, Sadayava Loke. And the animals and the birds and the deer, they're very fortunate because Pranayava Loke, you, Sadayava Loke, you glance at them, Sadaya. Sadaya means with mercy. Sadaya. Or it can be sat aya, sadaya. That means uh, by your glance it bestows auspiciousness upon them. 
So very lovingly, very mercifully, compassionately you glance at the at the birds and at the deer. And especially Gopyang Tarena Bujayo Apiyats Sriastri Sri means and these dark creepers. So dark creepers in Sanskrit are called Gopya. They are dark creepers and they are embraced between your strong arms to your chest. And these creepers are so beautiful that they are served by beauty personified. So this has another meaning. Another meaning of Gopya is Gopis. So out of all of these, whether it's the earth which is touched by your lotus feet, whether it's the uh, creepers which are touched by your nails, whether it's uh, the rivers who are embracing your body, or the birds and and uh, the uh, deer who receive your compassionate glance, out of all of them, the gopis are most fortunate because they are held to your chest and in your embrace, which is apiyats priha srihi, uh, something that even that is a desire that even Lakshmi Devi Sri, the goddess of fortune, wants, but it was not fulfilled. Now, all of these things that we're describing, actually none of them pertain to Balaram himself. The confidential meaning is this, that because Krishna has Sakyaras, friendship with Balaram, he can joke with him. And Krishna himself, he was feeling very fortunate that day. Why? Because this is chapter 15 of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's not Kaisho Lila yet. It's the end of Pauganda. So, you know, there's babyhood and then boyhood and then the adolescence. So, just at the end of boyhood, that's when Krishna begins secretly meeting with Braja Gopis. Hmm? Because one may say, Oh, today the earth has become for fortunate by the touch of your feet, Balaram. But one may say, well, what about yesterday? Did the earth not get touched by his feet yesterday? Why today? Mm. Understand? Mm. And the Aishwarya meaning is that previously Mother Earth was touched by your incarnations like Varahadev. Mm. Varahadev saved the earth from the Garbhadak Ocean. And they were married and they even had a child, Bamasur. Mm. So, but Earth was not lucky then, having the association of uh, Varahadev. But today the earth is lucky. So the meaning here is this. That Krishna, because he had secretly met with Braj Gopis, his childhood is just coming to an end and his adolescence is coming. And now he is so overjoyed that his romantic leela is just starting. And he cannot contain it. But in Vedic culture, it is uh, quite uncivilized to glorify yourself. So on the pretext of glorifying Balara, <laughs> Krishna is actually glorifying himself. But he could not say it openly. At the same, he could not say it openly and he could not hold it inside. So the real meaning of this is eh, that the earth is fortunate today because today the earth is touched by my foot which is uh, smeared with the kumkum from the bodies of Braj Gopis. Hmm? And the gopis are fortunate, like the trees, more fortunate than the trees, to be touched by my nails, the nakasparsh. Hmm? And... Oh, gopis are more fortunate than the rivers who embrace me because Braj gopis embrace me. And then when Braj gopis become very tired from our pastimes, then I look at them with compassion. So that glance, they are more fortunate than the birds and animals whom you are glancing at with compassion. Gopyan Tarena Bujya, Apiyats Prihasi. And the gopis, they are embraced to my chest. But he's saying to your chest. But Baram, no Ras Lila in Braj. During Braj Lila. So all of this was actually Krishna speaking indirectly about himself because he could not hide his happiness on his new discovery of Madhurasa in Brajalila and indirectly he is expressing that here to Balaram. Because Apiyat Sprihasri, Lakshmi Devi has left Vaikuntha. Kasyana Babosya na Deva Vidmahi Tavangire Nums Parashadi Karaha Yadvanche Asri Lavnasha Tapo Vihaya Kamam Suchiram Dedabrata, the wives of the uh, the Kaliya, they said this prayer that I don't know what austerities Kaliya has done to get your foot dust on his head. When to get that very dust, Lakshmi Devi has left Narayan and left Vaikuntha and she's doing austerities for thousands of years. Hmm? So it's not written that Lakshmi Devi has left Vaikuntha to get the embrace of Balaram. 
only Krishna, so everything is relating to Krishna. Mm -hmm. So this is the example of a sweet and beautiful uh, Sakiras between Krishna and Bhagavan. Shri Balade Prabhu Ki Jai Shri Balade Mapurnima Mahamotsava Ki Jai Hare Vrindavan Vihari Lala Ki Jai Hare Saniwari Ki Jai 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 Sri Rani Gaur Premanande Hare 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 H